What's going on, everyone? So yesterday, the San Antonio Spurs officially signed Harrison Ingram, uh, but they signed him to a two-way contract, uh, which I think is really interesting. Uh, first off, this now fills the three spots uh, for the two-way. Uh, so now you have Harrison Ingram, you have David Duke Jr., who they signed to a two-way, and then uh, Jamari Bouya uh, that they signed. So now you, those are your three guys that you have on the two-way deals. Now, the reason I'm surprised that they signed Harrison Ingram to a two-way contract is because of the new CBA and the way that, you know, the, the benefits you get for signing your second-round pick to those deals. That's why you see all these teams giving their their second-round picks that four-year, you know, whatever it is, like 70 or 7 million or whatever, right? Like, uh, that is something that is very valuable now in the new CBA because they really want to incentivize teams to kind of keep their second round picks and it doesn't impl implicate the cap the way that it used to and all that. So it's it's interesting that they didn't sign him to a actual contract, that they signed him to a two-way deal, but you know, it doesn't mean that he won't get a contract at some point. It doesn't mean that they won't bring him to the main roster and have him be a key part. Um, he had his good moments in uh, the previous summer league, right? He really showed those tools, those intangibles. He's a guy that when he was drafted 48th, like he was looked at as like, oh, this is clearly a Spurs type of player, right? The way he plays, the way he sees the game, the way that he operates, just easily should be able to slide in into that Spurs culture. Uh, you know, comes from North Carolina, so comes from a prestigious program for basketball. He's just sliding in and going to get to play a very similar game. Versatile Wayne that could play essentially two through four for you. Um, definitely raw, right? Definitely needs some work, right? He's far from a finished product, but he's also 21 years old. So he has a lot of room for growth, a lot of time to develop him, no real rush. I mean, you could spend the next two, three years developing him and kind of getting him right uh, before he needs to step in and play a big role. And and also, like, you look at the, the roster right now, right? Look at the other Harrison and Harrison Barnes, who they signed. Right? He's getting primarily the three minutes, right? He's probably going to play 30, 35 minutes a game at the three spot. Um, and then, you know, as of right now, uh, you still have other options that you're looking at uh, that could kind of play the, the backup three for you. Um, you know, obviously, Keldon Johnson's a guy that probably slots in and is kind of your vacuum scorer off the bench. You can always move like Devin Vassell over to the three or uh, Stephon Castle. You could slide over to the three if you need him to. Um, and then, you know, you have some of the other young guys that you're trying to, like, develop and grow in, like, Champagne and uh, 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 Branham, uh, right? Like, all of these guys that can come in and slot in at the three. I, you know, would, would like to see Harrison Ingram get some opportunities on the main roster. Like, my concern is that, like, they basically just kind of stash him in, in in the the G League, and he doesn't really get any opportunity this year. Which you know, I I don't think is the end of the world, right? Because again, I mean, Harrison Barnes probably getting you, you know, thirty thirty five minutes a game at the three, you know, on occasion maybe slides over to the four. So Harrison Barnes, I think, will be your main focal point at the three spot. Um, especially, you know, now that you have, you have Chris Paul, you have Harrison Barnes, right? You have Victor Wimanyama, you have Devin Vassell. Like, those, to me, are your locks uh, in the starting unit. And then it's just like, do you go with, like, a Jeremy Zohan? Or do you go with, like, a Stefan Castle? Or do you go with, you know, uh, whoever, right? Like, who's going to slide in? Are they going to go bigger? Are they, you know, smaller? Are they going to, you know, how, how do they approach it? coming up here, but, you know, I, I would like to see both of their rookies in Stefan Castle, as well as Harrison Ingram. Obviously, um, Juan Nunez is staying in Barcelona. He's going to finish out uh, the season there, and then probably next year come in uh, for, for the Spurs, but, you know, obviously, I like, 
just based on the moves and how the Spurs are active in the the trade market and they're you know still linked to Lori Markinen and stuff like clearly the Spurs are trying to be better sooner rather than later right but you still want to you're still a young team that even if you get a Lori Markinen or something right like you're probably still not winning a championship right like unless Victor just takes strides to being a top five guy next season which I, look, in my opinion, I think that there was a genuine argument. He was top 15 last year. I mean, he's the best defensive player in the league last year, right? And gave you, you know, 22 a game. I, I, So I don't think, especially with Chris Paul and stuff, I don't think it's far-fetched to think that Victor maybe steps into that top 10 range, um, at least arguably, right? And so if that happens, you get a guy like Laurie Markin in, you never know, right? The chips fall your way, you... You get the right matchups. We've seen stranger things, right? So, but I'd still like to see you give the young guys real opportunity. Like, my, my concern is that, you know, the, the rookies kind of get placed on the back burner. I don't really think that they're going to start Castle. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they do, you know, but I just look at it like with Chris Paul, you have, you know, Chris Paul... Devin Vassell, I think that's your your backcourt. And then I think Harrison Barnes is your three. And then Victor's your five. So they do you go with Jeremy Sohan? Do you go with you know pro- probably probably Sohan, you know, unless somebody else really emerges um during training camp. But so then now you're bringing Castle off the bench. How many minutes are you giving him a game? What type of role is he playing? Right, Harrison Ingram, he's going to spend most of the time in the G League, which, again, is fine, right? You want to develop him, but I want to see him get... I, I just I don't want to see him play solely garbage time. Like, see, what does the kid got? Right, sometimes you need to just throw guys to the wolves, right? Sometimes you just need to throw them in the fire and see, see do they sink or swim? Like, what, what are we doing here? Right? And so with Harrison Ingram and his versatility, I liked what you saw... In Summer League, I think he displayed a little bit of everything, that two-way ability, being able to knock down the three ball, defend, get to the basket, right? Like, do do a little bit of everything. Again, is he perfect? Is he a guy that, you know, you, you throw out there and you're, oh, here's your starting for? No, nothing like that. But I do think he's a guy that has a lot of growth, a lot of potential. And he does look very much like a Spurs basketball player. I just, I want to see... Unless you really start making some significant splashes to to really upgrade and round out this roster, which they very well might. We'll see. Time will tell. But, you know, unless you do something like that, I'd prefer you kind of work hard on growing and developing the young guys also. I mean, that's the whole point of bringing Chris Paul. It's one of the reasons why I really like the idea of Chris Paul. But I would have liked Harrison Ingram on the main roster. Right, even if you don't nest, even if you do just play him in the G League, a g- large majority, the difference with being on the main roster is you're with the actual team more, which means he'd be around Harrison Barnes more, which means he'd be around Chris Paul more, which would give him the opportunity to really take strides and and grow and develop, right? Which is what you want from your two young guys. You know, you got the, the two Harrisons now, like one Harrison can learn from the other. That'd be great, right? And then Castle learning from Chris Paul. I just think you have the two guys that you can mold into like the next wave of those two guys, right? Castle to me is more of a, you know, combo hybrid guard than he is a, a traditional point guard. But I do think he learns a lot from Chris Paul, right? I do think he learns a lot on just the playmaking side of things, how to you know, properly running offense and stuff. I think Harrison Ingram can learn a lot from Harrison Barnes and just being that two-way, three-and-D style guy. Like, the beauty of him is that, like, he's a guy that knows his role. He understands his role. He plays his role. You know, he doesn't take away from the others, right? Harrison Barnes I'm talking about, right? So I just think that Harrison Ingram could learn so much in that regard. A guy that can come in and basically slot in into that specific role, 
be that 3 and D guy, be that guy that can you know defend multiple positions, have that versatility. Like I said, I think you could slot him, you know, especially if he continues to grow and develop and develop an actual, you know, three-point shot with consistency and you know, just everything you want to see. Um I just I think that he he would be a great player that you can really kind of slot in. You know, you saw again all the promises that you wanted in summer league and in uh, you know with North Carolina and stuff like that. Um, you no, know, during summer league he averaged ten point six point three rebounds, uh, and you know that is that is very promising for a second round draft pick that helped lead this team to a four one record. Uh, in summer league and and really showed like okay the the promise is there everything that you want to see it's it's there he's just gotta you just gotta kind of work with him hone it master it and then let him take that next step um is he gonna be able to do that in the g league we'll see i will see what kind of strides he takes between this year and and next luckily he is very young lots of room lots of growth lots of potential but Anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Pass question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Do you think that, like, uh, yeah, like, you got to, you know, you, you got to just take your time with him, develop him. It's fine that he's on a, a two-way rather than a main contract. Do you think, no, they dropped the ball. They really should have gotten him on a two-way contract or uh, on a, sorry, a main contract, not a two-way contract. How do you feel? What are your thoughts are? Love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. It helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notification. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.